Right, uh, hi guys. Today we are going to be talking about uh, The Serpent's Sword by Matthew Harfey, which is the first book in the Bernicia Chronicles, and that is a historical fiction series set in early Anglo-Saxon England. So we follow a young Saxon from the southern kingdom of Cantuara as he travels northward to meet up with his brother, the warrior Octa. Uh, so following the recent deaths of the rest of their family uh, to a combination of plague and also some darker causes that you kind of find out more about during the book, there's not much actually keeping Beerbrand uh, south in Cantuara. But upon his arrival at his new home, he finds that his brother is dead and it soon becomes clear that it was murder. So Beerbrand swears that he will get revenge, but with no way to support himself, he decides to join the warband of the King of Bernicia. And so he also gets tangled up in the sort of constant wars that are a feature of this period of history. And like along the way, there's love, death, betrayal, lies, battles, you know, like everything you'd want from this type of story, basically. Right. Uh, so is it any good? Uh, well, the answer is yes, I really liked this book. Uh, if you know what kind of stuff I read, then you'll know that um, if it's got Anglo-Saxon in the blurb, then I'm definitely going to be interested. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to like everything in that sort of really niche little genre. But uh, this was a really good read. Uh, so I think for me, the real big plus points for this book were, were the tone and the setting, uh, the pacing and also the characters. You know, Matthew Harfey has, I believe, uh, a really good grasp of the time period. You know, he talks a bit about how he sees it, how he sees the time period um, in the historical note at the end of the book. Uh, and he talks about the lawlessness, uh, about sort of endemic small scale warfare between local strongmen after the removal of Roman power structures. Um, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, by the way. Um, and that all really comes across in his writing. You know, the tone is very dark and there are a few scenes that are really brutal, but I think that fits the spirit of the times uh, very well. And uh, in the midst of all that darkness, there's also glimpses of people striving for like a decent, honourable life, even some happiness, maybe. But, you know, the future always seems to hold a lot more fear than it does hope. Uh, the plot itself was a, a little bit formulaic with a lot of the classic tropes that you get from this genre. But it's done well. And as I said, the pacing was spot on. So it's really easy to whiz through this narrative and really enjoy the characters who are written you know, really well, in my opinion. Uh, the main character, Beerbrand, is your classic, you know, protagonist for this kind of genre. He's uh, a young man who's naturally talented as a warrior. So, yeah, nothing new there. Uh, what I liked about how Harfi uh, portrays him, though, is that at the beginning of the book, he hasn't really matured enough to be uh, comfortable with his own worldview and beliefs. So we get a lot of his uh, internal monologue questioning the rights and wrongs of situations and not knowing how to act because of that. And as the novel progresses, he builds up a, a lot of experiences and also plenty of uh, regrets. But these go towards forging his character in a very believable way. Um, I also thought that his sort of personal arch nemesis was done very well too. You know, he's clearly a, a straight up evil guy, but you do get the impression and it's it's in the writing there that this kind of time uh, produces people like that as a natural reaction to the brutality of it. And that doesn't mean that, you know, as a reader, you sympathize with him, but it does mean that you kind of understand why he's evil. Now, in terms of weaknesses, there were one or two things, but none of them was really major problems for me. It was just kind of where the writing was a bit average rather than good. You know, I've already mentioned that the plot itself was a bit formulaic, but it's done well. You know, there's no real big twists or anything. But like I say, I didn't really mind that because basically it's a good example of the formula.
Uh, and also, I thought there were points where this sort of general writing style was a little bit brusque. There were just a few sections that I thought could have benefited from an extra paragraph of descriptive prose or a nice metaphor thrown in, you know. And I, I know that Harfi can do it because there were a fair few lines in the book where I kind of sat back and I was like, yeah, that was some nice writing, you know. So yeah, just a little bit more of that in the next book in the series would be absolutely ideal for me. But that's really just a personal taste thing, I guess. And the other thing was that there was just a, a little bit uh, of telling instead of showing, especially with regards to the the uh, character's personalities. You know, he'll he'll tell you, oh, you know, he's the strong, silent type, but he he would be better off putting him in a situation where he where the character is able to be strong and silent rather than just saying it do you know what i mean so that you feel like you're learning about the characters yourself rather than just being spoon fed what it is that they're supposed to be like but anyway this was a really enjoyable read for me and i think if you're into anything like Bernard Cornwell or Giles Christian or Christian Cameron or Robert Lowe and uh, Angus Donald anyone like that then uh, I think you'll probably like this book too so yeah the serpent sword by Matt oh, upside down there we go so yeah the serpent sword by Matthew Harfey um, definitely a good read I would recommend it if you like this kind of historical fiction if you're into the anglo-saxon period any of these things then yeah this is a, a book that I would recommend checking out uh, yeah so bye then <laughs>